let's talk about different ways of crafting introduction paragraphs so that you have more than one method to approach the problem. So first, we want to understand what the purpose of an introduction is. And an introduction needs to accomplish three things. One of the things it needs to do is it needs to move the reader out of their own lives and in their own headspace into your analysis. You also need to create some context for understanding your ideas. So they need to understand the text, the text type, the author, and a little bit about the story in order to understand how you're addressing the issues that are contained within the text. And you need to introduce the ideas that you'll be talking about. So we can accomplish all three of those things in a variety of ways. And we're going to take a look at a bunch of examples of different types of introduction paragraphs and how they accomplish those three things. One tip I want to give you before we go any further is to try writing your introduction last. One of the reasons we want to do this is that sometimes you don't know what you're going to write about until you write it. It's hard to write an introduction for something that we don't really know. You don't want to get boxed into your introduction. Sometimes if you write an introduction first, then you'll be writing content through the body and all of a sudden you'll run into an idea and say, well, I can't write that idea because that idea was not in my introduction. So writing the introduction last allows you a little bit more fluidity and a little bit more freedom to write whatever you're going to write and get all your ideas on the paper first and then go back and kind of encapsulate them in a good introduction paragraph. So here's a sample introduction paragraph. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and just read through this and think about the way that you would divide this introduction paragraph into sections. Go ahead and pause the video and read it through and do that now. Okay, we're back. So hopefully you notice that this introduction really kind of divides into three different sections. We start with a quotation, and then after we have a quotation, we have this bridge that helps us move away from the quotation and into the actual uh, content that we're going to be talking about. So if we look through this, his whole life was dominated by fear, the fear of failure and of weakness. It was deeper and more intimate, blah, blah, blah. That is our quote. But then we have to move from our quote into the ideas that we want to address within the paper. And that's what this second line does. It acts as a bridge between those two things. It says this line from the novel, Things Fall Apart by Chen Wan Chebi, perfectly encapsulates the driving forces that come to devour the main character of Conquo. Okay, that acts as a bridge to go into those main forces. It is these driving forces that motivate his ego, give purpose to his actions, and ultimately lead to his fate. Okay, so from this last section, we can also tell what the three body paragraphs to your paper are going to be. If you're writing a five paragraph essay, I know that one of your paragraphs is going to be about motivating his ego. I know that one of your paragraphs is going to be about giving purpose to his actions, and I know that the third paragraph is about ultimately leading to a conquest fate. So this section, this thesis section, outlines what the three main driving arguments are going to be within your paper. Another thing that I want you to notice about this introduction is that I always find an opportunity to work in the text type. It's a novel. If it were a poem, I'd mention that it were a poem. If it were a short story, I'd mention that it were a short story. I always mention the text type. I always mention the title somewhere, and I always mention the author. Now, these three pieces of information don't have to be in a particular sentence, but they do have to be in your introduction. If you write an introduction and it does not have the text title, text type, and author's name in it, you haven't effectively addressed your job yet. The last thing that I want to want you to notice is that I also address the specific character of a conquo. Okay, let's take a look at another example. For this one, I begin with a concession. A concession means that I'm giving something up. And I know that in, when somebody reads of Mice and Men, one of the common misunderstandings that they have is with Curly's wife. And after you're done reading it, come back and we'll talk about how we can divide it up. Okay, we're back. All right, so hopefully you divided it up like this. So we begin with a concession. We give the concession that it's true that the character of Curly's wife in the novel of Mice and Men can e be easily read as some sort of floozy siren that tries to corrupt men. So we're giving in. We're saying, yes, of course. And, you know, a first reading, it's natural that you think that about her. And then I give a rebuttal. Yet, a little investigation can quickly shatter that shallow interpretation. So I start with a concession, giving in, saying, of course, yes, you're right. But then I give a rebuttal and say, but actually, if we read deeper, you find out that you're incredibly wrong. And then after we give that, we give the reasons behind that. A closer reading of her context, a better understanding of John Steinbeck's intent, and the application of just a little empathy reveal a character who is much different than the men in the book make her out to be. Once again, I've, in I've included somewhere in this uh, response the text type, the text title, and the author's name. I've also managed to talk about a specific character, 
and you are able to see all three of the major arguments. You know that the one body paragraph is going to be about a close reading of the context. Another body paragraph is going to be understanding John Steinbeck's intent, and another paragraph is going to be about reading with empathy. Let's take a look at another example. So this one's going to begin with a paradox. Go ahead and pause the video and read this one all the way through, and then we'll talk about how we can divide it up. Okay, we're back. All right, so this is the way we want to divide this one up. We start with a paradox, something that seemingly cannot be true. So the story of Parvana and the Breadwinner is a story of freedom from the perspective of a character who can never be truly free. That's kind of ironic. How can you have a story about freedom in which there is no freedom in the story? It's kind of a paradox, and it creates curiosity in the mind of the reader. So from there, we need to provide a little bit of context for this, can, because this statement can be really confusing if somebody doesn't really understand the story. We give them just enough information about the story to be able to understand the context of what we're talking about. The novel by Deborah Ellis follows Parvana as she lives under the Taliban rule in Afghanistan. Ah, so that's the context of this statement, and we can understand that a little bit better, and then I need to go into the thesis. So following her journey allows readers to understand both the struggles girls go through in order to gain access to education and the pain of family separations and death caused by the rule of an authoritarian regime. So in this particular paper, this looks like it's only a four-paragraph paper, introduction, these two points, a point about girls accessing education, and a paragraph about family separations and deaths causing pain, and then a conclusion. So note that there are only two main points in this particular example. Okay, next one. So we're going to look at the text Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, and we're going, to begin, we're going to pretend that we're answering a question about this text, that somebody has posed this essay question, how does the novel use stylistic devices to make the story more compelling? Go ahead and take a moment, pause the video, and read through this entire response and see how you would divide it up. Okay, we're back. Hopefully you divided it something like this. So we've got the first sentence, in the novel, Curious Incident of the Dog of the Nighttime, the author, Mark Haddon, uses many stylistic devices to make the novel more compelling. This is just a direct restatement of the question. If you look at this question, how does the novel use stylistic devices to make the story more compelling, all it does is reverse and states the question as a statement. Then I go into detail in the second sentence in order to answer that question. Within the novel, the author makes use of specific sentence types in order to create character voice, includes extra text features like drawings in order to show how the main character's mind works, and specifically avoids many standard types of literary language usually used in fiction stories in order to create a unique perspective. Okay, so I, this gives me all the information that answers the question, and it gives me my text type, my text title, and my author's name here. And then it gives me what the three main points my, of my thesis are going to be right down here. Now, while this is a very exact and specific response to a question, and it could be very effective in letting whoever's grading the paper know, hey, I really did read this question, and I really understand exactly what it asks, and I'm going to give it back to you directly so that you understand that there was no misunderstanding about the question, that can be a very specific approach to something. But overall, I find this to be a very weak introduction. It's specific, but not very strong, and there are stronger ways to do it. So use this when necessary, but I wouldn't use it very often. So sometimes you want to give a little bit of context about the author and their background before you get into what you're actually going to be talking about. And that's what this response does here. Go ahead and pause the video and read it now. Okay, we're back. So in this one, hopefully you notice these three things, that we have the background, the bridge, and the thesis. And we start with the background. The novel The Kite Runner was written by Khalid Hosseini and published in 2003. Then we need a bridge to get from the background into the actual topic of the paper. So we have this bridge. Hosseini was born in Afghanistan but moved to the United States in 1980. The book contains themes derived from both experiences. Ah, okay, so I moved from this personal experience into making it relevant to the book itself. Now I can introduce the thesis. The main character reads almost like a what-if version of the author as the story delves into themes of belonging, family, and forgiveness. And we know that these are going to be my three body paragraphs. I'm going to have a paragraph about belonging, a paragraph about family, and a paragraph about forgiveness. Okay, that's it. That's all the examples that we have. Uh, Go back, review those different approaches to writing an introduction, and try them out. Find out which one really works for you.